Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. And with the fancy Little Birds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this can be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal action from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Birds, that's our word, brought to you by Bipcot and Fume Phone. Um, music by 3chainlinks.com. Or, and then we have uh, our one of our another one of our new co-hosts, uh, Jim Babb. How are you doing, man? Great. Awesome to be with you. Yeah, it's, we have an exclusive. Uh, you made the news. <laughs> Normally, we'll Well, not talk exactly. About the news. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, I didn't. Yeah, I just made fun of the news, and that became the news. Now, which is actually, I was helping a friend make fun of the news because he was the news for making fun of the news. And we're talking about NJ weed man, Ed fortune, who was literally arrested for hurting a guy's feelings on Facebook. They sent their like heavy, they're like the major crimes unit or whatever, like gun toting. Anyway. So cause of, cause of something, cause of, you know, of, of what uh, weed man said about this. Now get this, the policeman's name, who got his feelings hurt is Herbert Flowers. Okay. <laughs> now, I assume he goes by Herb, Herb Flowers. And I just thought this, you know what? This is perfect. Herb Flowers versus the Weed Man. Okay. So, anyway, um, but who's the dad? Ed who's is got the not shy who's about the, expressing himself. Who's got the so, fire, though? I guess it's not the cop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well,. The the funny thing is is then um, so uh, anyway it's getting a lot of traction and this this guy Herb Flowers Officer Herb is getting <laughs> um, a, a a quick lesson in the Streisand effect so it's like oh he said something mean about me and now everybody wants to know what it is and anyway he's accused of uh, improper relations with uh, underage women this this uh, Herb Flowers dude so. Anyway, uh, anyway, my meme made it into the Trentonian, which I guess was yeah, it was kind of fun. What is the Trentonian? Because so, they were like the Trenton, New Jersey newspaper. Okay. So uh, I don't know. Well, it's on their website story. I don't know if it, it's probably not in the actual newspaper, but it could be. But I just made a funny meme about you know making fun of this stupid cop, and, and so then they're doing a story about. Here's a guy making fun of a stupid cop, and you know, <laughs> boom, they included the meme with it. So nice. You, you should try yeah. to see if you can't get a back, back. What is it? A back issue of that? That'd be glorious. It, yeah, I don't even know if they printed it or not, but uh, it's just. I just thought it was pretty funny. You know, it's like, it, I guess it is. It's kind of a special, you know, like tr- like trolling achievement. I think when your when your trolling gets picked up by by. You know, what is it? Essentially mainstream media, you know, local mainstream media. Mm-hmm. So anyway, there's hope for meme makers everywhere. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? So what did the meme say exactly? Uh, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I guess or I should roughly. have it with me. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we don't believe in show prep. We don't ever believe in getting ready for this show. If you listen to the show, you'll constantly hear me going like, where the hell did I put that link? Oh, where the hell is this? <laughs> what was that thing again? Yeah. Um, I think it was something along the lines of like, oh, he wanted he wanted to be in a safe space with some cookies and some milk and, and a blankie. Well, the, the one that made it the one that made it um, into the news story was it, it says it's just a picture of this cop on his on his uh, radio. And he says, help. This is Herb Flowers requesting immediate backup. Feelings hurt on Facebook. <laughs> Memes fired. Send all units. OK, so <laughs> anyway. <laughs> 
so the the headline on the Trentonian. Let me see if I can find this story because it, it it's the actual um, headline itself on the story that that the Trentonian is running on this on this ridiculous situation. They actually use the word butt hurt in the headline. <laughs> so, <laughs> I got I mean, let me get. I'm looking for the exact article right now because it's so funny. Like, um, did they show? A, anyway. They should have showed a picture of a butt with the bandaid on it. That would have been. That would have been even more. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get him a new meme for their. You know, <laughs> it'll be like, uh, you know, Officer Flowers file photo. You know, like. <laughs> Yeah, they need to do a page six uh, follow up. Like, it was has there been any further butt hurt in the situation? Um, get an official statement. Yeah, call, yeah, call them. <laughs> get it from the, the the police commissioner is going to come out and be like, there was an issue last week when uh, Mr. James Babb uh, made an internet meme that resulted in some serious butt hurt. The officer was sent to the local police uh, sent to the local hospital in the ER department uh, and was released earlier uh, with minor injuries. To the uh, rectal region. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. No. Uh, well, you know, but he, these are some of the headlines that, like, and I'm as I'm looking for this, I'm just seeing some of these great headlines. Okay, this is like, because um, uh, he was recently arrested for they raided his NJ Weedman has a in Trenton, so we should give a little background on this. He's got a, this. He has a a restaurant called the Weedman's Joint and a Rastafarian temple adjacent to it it's a like a sanctuary so anyway they've been harassing him and it's right across the street from the uh state government capital or whatever in trenton well it's, so, it, to be fair it's because he has uh he has a certain type of flower that the state says no like he should have been growing like hibiscus but instead he wanted to grow that's cannabis. probably also illegal in jersey though so uh, <laughs> okay uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay well oh yeah, get this. One of the crimes he's accused of, they so they raided his place. They found some weed. Um, there's a bunch of, you know, like 11 people have been charged in this in this incident. And one of the things that, that Weed Man was charged with was having a security system on the property. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, yeah. that's, just, that's just terrible. How, how, what was he thinking? <laughs> like, did he think about his neighbors in this whole process? But check out some of these headlines. He's libertarian. This is, and, and, is, he, is he a libertarian? Because clearly he must be with all the, all that selfishness. Well, Security. he would be, but he smokes so much weed that he's he's kind of you know misses it in certain areas. But he's he's close enough, um, and you know he's he does more libertarian work than uh, twenty five you know great anarchists that I know. So okay. Uh, anyway, check out some of these headlines and and judge for yourself. This is NJ. Um, uh, 101.5, their website. Weed man busted for calling cop a pedophile, so he calls cop a tender butt. You know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. NJ, and okay, here's the same radio station. It's like the major, like, like pop station. NJ Weed man promises to give prosecutor legal ass whooping after major bust. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> this guy, he's so in your face with it. I just, I just love the guy. I love him to death because he, you know, he fights and he wins. He wins. You know, I don't know how he does it, but he's, you know, courage. He's got courage and he just doesn't give up. Yeah, and he's you know, perseverance, which, which is, which is not an attribute you would normally attribute to someone who smokes that much weed, or would call himself <laughs> Weed Man because he smokes so much weed. Um. Yeah, he's, you know, a lot of people probably, you know, maybe dismiss him as a stoner, but I, I know a lot of stoner type activists and he is, he's far different from most of them. Um, and just in his approach, he, he, that's why they're always mad at him. Like all the, like the, the normal crowd the that like, we want to be, no, you can't smoke that joint in, in the legislature. We, you're going to make <laughs> us look bad. <laughs> and he's like, fuck the law, smoke it anyway. <laughs> You know, like, that's just, you, you, I'm just, it's nice to have guys like him out there, you know, doing that, you know, making those like hardcore, like, you know, just not intimidated, not, not pandering. Um, I don't know. So anyway, but you know, he's facing some serious charges, so we got to, you know, hope for the best there, but he's, the dude's under siege in Trenton. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Well, what it, else it, is going on? Well, that's terrible. So I guess in other news, um, I guess we had the libertarian debate here in Vegas. I did not go. I had to work. I had to work an extra day, which 
I was I thought I was supposed to be doing the fiends tonight. Or I'm recording this on Tuesday, but I guess I was supposed to do it on Monday, and I thought my schedule said <laughs> said Tuesday. So I picked so I picked up on Monday and I couldn't make it. Um, either way, so I missed out on the fiends and I missed out on the great libertarian debate where I could have seen, you know, Gary Johnson talk about how oh. we should perhaps oh. make bakeries bake cake uh (laughs) bake cakes for people don't want to do it and uh and then punchable face and john mccaffrey um pseudo murderer uh i know he didn't do it (laughs) but yeah i would go to i would go to mcafee's after party but i those all those other guys are squares Yeah, yeah total squares um, I don't, I don't know. I, 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 to an extent, I liked Gary Johnson, but he tries his best to make me hate him. <laughs> he really gives it a good shot. Uh, especially well, with have the, you read his book? Has you read his book on the the seven principles of good government? Why would I read a minarchy book? <laughs> <laughs> I'm on that but hardcore you, stuff, man. Come on. You know, and I didn't read the book, but I saw like a page from it, and I wish I could quote from it directly. But it's all stuff like, you know, try hard, do a good job, uh, <laughs> never give up. <laughs> that a gold <go>, boy. <laughs> and and, and give, he, he mentions give a hand he for mentions, coming out tonight. <laughs> yeah, he, he he mentions like, um, you know, he says something like libertarian principles are great. But you you need to mix them with a dose of common sense, real world governance. Okay. Well, to give him so, some like, credit, seriously. I guess he was governor. He did do that. So it, right. So he can't exactly but, come yeah. out against governance yeah. <laughs> by force, right? It's like, I, look, I've been a slave master my whole life. I'm supposed to be an abolitionist now. You know what? Um, but so. Anyway, a, a dose of real world governance, you know, like what could be more more nauseating a concept? Yeah. And then I, I don't know if Daryl W. Perry made it. I think they just got the top three because I think for the most part, as much as we like Daryl uh, personally, uh, he he's, looks like he's not going to get very far. It looks like it's it's basically kind of coming down to Peterson and Johnson. At least from what they well, what, what right. we can tell, uh, delegate. Yeah, Daryl's far too libertarian to to you know to succeed there. Um, <laughs> well, but you know you know what this is what I'm hoping for, and I don't really care. But I just I I don't know. I'm just kind of still kind of curious, and I'm I'm kind of hoping that um, that McAfee is everybody's second choice because there's so there's so much hate and animosity between these. People like seriously. People take this seriously. I I couldn't even like. They're really all emotional about Austin Peterson or Gary Johnson. I'm like what? Like, <laughs> like, like, like it's 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 silly enough for people to get all like bent out of shape about Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton or Trump. Okay, but this is like you're you're getting upset about the kids' table seating. <laughs> <laughs> like really? <laughs> well, they, well they, 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 to be fair, they had some some poll where they where they lined up Clinton and Trump and Johnson, and Johnson got eleven percent in the poll, which is unprecedented for a third party. I mean, Ross Perot, but he would never but get he's that not in a an third actual party. vote, right? So we'll we'll see, but it's it'd be interesting. You know, it'd be interesting to see him get a state. But to win the presidency, yeah, you know, it's not going to happen. It's a fantasy. It's a yeah. fantasy to think he would get more than you know anything that he did last time was, a, I guess, about one percent of the vote, whatever that's worth. Yeah, you know, like I don't even think it means anything when you get fifty-one percent of the vote <laughs> to get to get one percent of the vote. Like that's that's just ridiculous. So, but yeah, then uh, but then again, we all <laughs> said the same thing about Trump. <laughs> like, oh yeah, this guy is never going to win. The American public is not that crazy enough to to nominate this guy. But uh, I guess I have to kind of eat my crow and uh, angel. Man, no, they're he said, they're uh, they're going with they're going with they've they've already picked Hillary. It's it was oh, yeah, uh, didn't yeah, they even yeah. announce it already? It's <laughs> yeah, Hillary. They, yeah, they kind of. <laughs> They just kind of announced it. Oops, we announced it too early. Uh, never, yeah. uh, I'm re-met nominee, not president. Sorry. Um, yeah, but I thought there was I can't no see way them. Was I can't nominee. see them allowing somebody into that office that's that is that much of a loose cannon. You know, they really need someone that follows orders. You know, does what they're told. Um, anyway, I'd be I would be very surprised if it went any other way. But yeah, but. 
Yeah, but it'll. It, needless to say, it's it's an interesting campaign season. I, like I've never been right. this interested. But could you in imagine? Can you imagine politics. like the, the the cigar? The guys in the cigar and brandy room, you know, and they got their monocles and they're like, you know, the, the Goldman Sachs after party. They're like, <laughs> okay, guys, we're going with Trump. You know, like no, <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to go with Trump. They're going to go with the tried and true person that they know will bomb anybody they want at a moment's notice. Yeah, they're Hillary. like, but well, well, Trump would bomb anybody on a moment's notice, but he'd also bomb like three other countries with it. <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like, and, and that's just right. If they, no, no, like, not if they, North if they Korea. They criticized him on Twitter. He would do that. You, you, know? you can't bomb North Korea. That's our boogeyman. <laughs> what are you doing? We need that there. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. The difference is. Is that Trump would will bomb somebody because they made because he got made fun of on Twitter and Hillary just does it just for the straight up cash, okay? <laughs> so, which is more monstrous? You decide. Yeah, he'll, he'll probably bomb some of the states that voted against him: <laughs> Wisconsin, goodbye; uh, Iowa, goodbye. No more of that. Um, but 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 what I really wanted to say, I wasn't trying to make this a, I guess a political thing. Um, no. <laughs> I guess Adam Kokesh has endorsed Daryl W. Perry. Just kidding. No, he, he endorsed McAfee, <laughs> McAfee uh, for president. And a lot of people are mad. A lot of people are mad at him, you know, because. Well, how much how much um, I mean, how much drugs did McAfee have to give him for that? <sighs> I, don't, I don't I think Mac, McAfee is more into like cocaine and that sort of thing, whereas Kokesh is more kind of like the, oh, I'm going to do pot and mushrooms type of thing. So I don't know if there was drugs involved, maybe some maybe some greasing of the palms, so to speak. Uh, I think Miller or, pointed out that you know he what? likes to... I think, uh, I mean, you know, if you're if you're picking, you know, the lesser of three evils of those three, he, I would definitely go with him, too. I mean, uh, not that I would, you know, I don't play that pick the lesser of evils game, but if I did, it would be McAfee. Yeah, but... <laughs> Um, I mean, like from a strategic point, would not that it matters because the Libertarian Party isn't going to do anything. Uh, he would probably be the least amount because all they're going to do is go, "Oh, this guy's a murderer." Yeah, this guy's a murderer, just, but it's not well, true. But, it don't. It doesn't matter. No, wait, doesn't, are you talking about Gary Johnson? No. Because <laughs> uh, Gary Johnson actually did murder a guy. Well, so but here's the thing: it's like it's different. McAfee's it, only like rumored to have killed a guy. Johnson, uh, Johnson, like did it like as part of his job. See, here's the difference. It's, it was part of his job <laughs> being just, governor, so that's okay. See, if you if he's you, just following following his own orders. If or, I if I bombed what? a bunch of brown people, then I'm a racist. But if I bombed a bunch of people and I had and I was behind that weird little podium with the nice little seal that says President of the United States, then I, that, that's fine. That's that's just foreign policy. <laughs> right. So, right. Right. So his his ability to kill helpless people, he's proven himself as presidential. Right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, of course, everybody's in the comments section saying, like, no, 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 no. Nobody for president. I don't want to rule her. Um, nobody 26. Even Vermin Supreme? I mean, no. of course, Vermin's really the only serious candidate. No, oh, that's that's who I ended up endorsing. And it, it's the only one that really matters, right? He's the only right. one that could actually win a debate between Clinton and, and, and Trump, right? He was, you know what? He's the one that would be in the debate that would make me watch the debate. Yeah. That's that's how that would you know. So. <laughs> yeah, so definitely vermin supreme because you know, and and all, all my type of, like I don't care about free free college. I don't want free college. I'm too old for that now. I don't need free health care. I got I got a pony. I got I uh, but I want pony. and free free electricity because of the zombies. We have the zombie generation. Right. Oh yeah, the zombie powered future is, is you know could be ours. Um, you know I am you know, tired of paying. He, you know what he's bills. actually. He's been a help to me. I'm, I've already been using him, like with my with my daughter. I just say, remember what Vermin says: toothbrushing is mandatory. You know, and she's like, okay, I guess I have to go brush. And so, you know, it's helping me, like with the, that's what I call a dose of common sense, real world. You know, going to get the teeth brushed kind of governance. You know, yeah, because well, this country does have a moral and oral decay. That's for sure. Uh, not Trump. Have you seen how white that dude's teeth is? It's unreal. It like hurts my face when whenever I look at him. Um, really? He, yeah, he's because he got like this this orange leathery skin, and then you're like you so your eyes are kind of used to that. Then he opens his mouth and he's got like these 
like like he looks like someone turned their their cell phone on on bright when the, in a dark room. Oh. <laughs> well, I guess I'm <laughs> usually at that point I'm like flinching away, wincing in horror, so at that, not really looking at the teeth as I'm <laughs> averting my gaze. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's it. So yeah, so poor poor Adam Kokesh. Um. <laughs> no, I think that's great, and uh, you know what? I'm and I just made a joke about him, you know, you know, selling his endorsement for drugs. But I I think why why not? Right? Well, you know, he sold his you, endorsement for less, so why not? <laughs> I would, uh, you know, I mean, endorsements are ridiculous, and of course, I've always said that nobody would be a better candidate for president than Daryl Perry. So. That's why I vote for nobody. Yeah, uh, I love the this little campaign that everybody's been doing with the Austin Peterson logo, the, the, the exploitable oh. Austin Peterson campaign. Oh, <laughs> there's some great ones in there. Like, um, yeah, it's, if you punch him in the face, it doesn't violate the non-aggression principle. <laughs> Fine, I'll admit is it. The, Even is I want to punch me. You're yeah. talking about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even I want to punch me. A, a face that, like even a mother could punch repeatedly or something. <laughs> yeah, I think it was uh, there was like a couple groups that I was in that started really doing this, and then now it's blowing up outside of those groups on Facebook. But I remember making one that was um, it was basically when I find out who makes that Libertarians Against Humanity game, I'm going to track them down at an International Students for Liberty conference. <laughs> 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 you didn't. You didn't hear about this. I didn't see that one. Wait okay, so wait. Is this a true story or a meme? A, no, this I, is a true I, I story. I can't tell the difference anymore. Okay. This is a true story. I'll put. I'll post a link in the in the show notes uh, to the actual thread that it happened in. But basically, there was a. A person who had bought my game, Libertarians Against Humanity, which is a Cards Against Humanity expansion that kind of makes fun of libertarians lovingly. Right. Uh, sure. You know, because you know that's just how that's just how I roll. Um, you know. Um. So, and then someone had posted a picture of the card that mentions him. Now, the card that mentioned him said something along the lines of an edgy Austin Peterson comment that's really just a typical neocon position, <laughs> uh, which he does that. He'll just be like, oh, yeah, like, I think it's a, a libertarian to bomb Iran. <laughs> what? Right. Okay. Um, so, and then he was like, oh, yeah. I I found out who 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 made that game, and I saw them at International Students for Liberty conference, and I try and I tried to talk to him about it. And he ran like a bitch, like I'm such a tough guy, awesome. Uh, and I was like, <laughs> funny, I, I've never been to International Students for Liberty conference. <laughs> and he was like, oh well, yeah. And he showed a picture of me when I was like really fat. Like I uh -huh. had even lost, I had even lost a lot of weight since then at the time, and I've lost even more since with my diet. Um, and, and I, and he, he was just like, yeah, I would have noticed that fat chubby jowls bouncing around. <laughs> I was like, oh, come on. Really? Is that what we're doing now? Yeah. <laughs> like, yep, that's, oh, that's... I'm sorry. I made a mistake. Like, you know, like, Hey, did you want to have a conversation or, oh, you know, no, he, no, no, this is, this Peterson. is like, yeah, <laughs> this is like fifth grade playground level. <laughs> yeah. You know? Well, and, and I think that the, uh, what I'm hoping is that the Gary Johnson people, um, are going to be so hateful of Austin Peterson that they wouldn't consider him, and that the Gary, that the Austin Peterson people, the uh, Freedom Ninjas, are so repulsed by Gary Johnson that they they can't accept him. So so th so bring in McAfee, obviously the the funnest candidate of those three. So why not, right? Like everybody could be like, well, okay, I guess we'll go with McAfee. You know, we can be friends again. You know. <laughs> When he first announced he ran for president, all the other people that ran decided they were going to run for president. Like Austin Peterson did, excuse me, did some like Facebook live streams, and there was, and I think one of them he was wearing a sombrero or something like that. Like it just, it's just absurd, and it's just like okay, this is cheesy. Uh, and then you know Gary Johnson decides he's going to do a media lecture. I mean, he just did Joe Rogan today. I was listening to that before you hopped on. Um, the presumptive nominee, and then he I, was, like, ugh. yeah, he is. He's, he's gonna get it. Um, <laughs> and then they had, uh, and then he was, all, and then the day before he was on, or the, two days before he was on Penn Sunday School, uh, because they did the Libertarian debate yesterday. And so, yeah, he's been doing, he's been hitting hard. Um, and then, of course, what does McAfee do? do? He does the only two videos that I've seen him do was one where he was telling people how to uninstall McAfee antivirus, where basically That's he just funny. gives he just gives up and just does coke off of, of his wife's butt. 
ass. Oh, yeah, that's right. We're not on the radio. Uh, he just coke See, up his wife's ass. Why not go with that? And then right? the other so one was basically like, all right, so here's what happened in Bolivia. I didn't murder anybody. <laughs> that's a, that's someone I can get behind. <laughs> uh, the whole, you like, know, well, not, you know, maybe not. we should make bakeries, uh, cook cakes for gay people who are Christian who oppose it. I think that's the libertarian choice or however he talks. Oh, um, that's just now. Now you, that's crazy anarchist talk. <laughs> <laughs> See, you're 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 not bringing in that common sense, real world governance that's going to tell people what cakes they're going to bake, right? That's that's what he's talking about. Yeah, hold on, give me one second. I'm not even going to edit this out. Just, my cat's going crazy because I closed it's, the door behind me. Come, here. Come on, there you go. It's government so small it can fit in the oven. <laughs> All right. So yeah, I'm not even going to edit this out because we do everything raw. Did you hear my joke? <laughs> no, because I had my headphones off. I had, I had to get my cat yeah. out because she just I kept annoying I said, me. Gary Johnson, he wants government so small, it'll fit in the oven. <laughs> oh, that's too soon. That's no. too, is, that a, is that a right stuff dot biz joke? It's not a Nazi joke. Oh, no, okay. no, no. It's a bake the damn cake joke. <laughs> 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 just just bake the damn cake, I guess. I don't know. Uh, hey, you know what I learned that I thought was funny? You remember the burka ban thing, right? He was like, "Yeah, I'm gonna have to ban burkas for something." He's right. Remember that? Did he? Did he? Did he really want to ban burkas? Yeah, he wanted to ban burkas. Okay, and uh. then somebody's like, and then then like uh, a week later, like it, everybody's making fun of him. A week later, he goes, "Oh no, I, I made a mistake. No, I really that was wrong. I shouldn't. You know, okay." So. So, you know, and it kind of blows over and I think, well, you know, at least, you know, we like figured out like that's completely unlibertarian and tyrannical and authoritarian. And, you know, like, really, you're going to have fashion cops out there now. Um, you're dressed in women's too long. clothing. Yeah. Yeah. And like, really, this is somehow and you you call yourself liberty anyway. So but he re he recanted and I'm like, well, I guess at least maybe probably somebody whispered in his ear and be like, dude, that might have really worked on the Republican <laughs> talking point circuit or something. But here, remember, you switched to Libertarian Party. <laughs> oh, yeah. So but then and when he came to Pennsylvania, he clarified why he changed his mind on that. It wasn't a, a moment of Libertarian clarity. What he said was. It turns out there's really no way to, to ban just burkas uh, because you'd have to ban all masks, and that would interfere with the with the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. I kid, I kid, like, this was part of the – I'm not making this up. Like, oh, oh, because so, okay, it's not like – he didn't change his mind because it's a ridiculous, asinine thing to propose. He changed his mind because it's like, well, gee – I don't know. Will they let me ban just certain kinds of masks? I don't know if I can get away with that. So, You're like, I'm, I'm anyway. afraid that you know, if Jim ever comes visit Vegas, he can't wear his new Bane mask. So we can't have that. Um, we got to find some other <laughs> reason to ban burkas then, because it's, it can't be because of a mask. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, it would spoil a lot of people's fun. Yeah. Um, but you know, I I just feel bad because it's like you know. Guy's probably a nice guy, but he's just so clueless when it comes to libertarianism. I just, I always cringe when he opens his mouth. He seems like the kind of guy that you see. A lot of people like the president that they, they can have a beer with, right? I he's mm. he's more of a kind of the guy that I don't want to have a beer with because he's a health nut. But you know, he'll smoke a joint with you. I, I guess. Um, that's not my Real, thing. But, you know what? He'll probably eat some edibles with you and you can hang around <laughs> and wait for it to digest. Like, whoa, that's so cool, dude. Um, yeah, then he can get hey. around to talk, talking about banning turbans for a while. <laughs> yeah. What's the, yeah, what do you want to ban now, Gary? You know? <laughs> Can I get a dose of that common that common sense real world governance, please? Yeah. My freedom's getting a little too free over here. Yeah, dose me up. Dose me up with some of that governance. Is that is that the new strain that's been going around? <laughs> the new, the, new pot the governance. Yeah, the, the governance. <laughs> the governance. <laughs> it's common sense, real world branded <laughs> governance. Yeah. So yeah. I, you should check out that book he's got. Literally, it's like and try hard. And give it your best. Never give up. <laughs> should I do one of those? I should probably do one of those, like, you know, or an actual libertarian reads <laughs> Gary Johnson's book and put it up on YouTube and just kind of go through some of the things. 
<laughs> um, that would be quite clever. So yeah, and then I, I I like how Facebook is doing this thing where like it reminds you like, hey, did you know like three years ago today you posted this picture? Uh, I guess what was it? Yeah, I like that too. Yesterday, no, the other day, it reminded me that hey, you posted a picture about Austin Peterson. Uh, <laughs> so kind of some backstory was um, he who cannot be named had retweeted a, a picture from someone who had leaked Josie Wales's picture of her topless. Um, and there was like a big outcry against a lot of the cop blockers and he could not be named. And, uh, you know, Austin Peterson was trying to, was trying to do the high, high ground. And he was also kind of going on his show and try, kind of bragging that he gets more, uh, nook than, than him, uh, which is, you know, not saying much, but, uh, I guess Austin Peterson had posted this comment, uh, you know, trying, trying to moralize it by saying, Dozens upon dozens of uh, women send me nude photographs monthly, almost all unsolicited. I never, ever, ever share them. Uh, one like, and then, <laughs> and then, uh, and I'm sitting here like going like, okay, almost unsolicited. So I, I'm, I'm kind of curious as a presidential candidate. This would be a good question for him at a debate. We should try to get this okay. <laughs> debate somehow. Is how much of of these unsolicited. Uh, how much of these nude pictures that he gets are actually unsolicited? How many of them does he actually solicit? As president, do, are you going to solicit like Angela Merkel's uh, <laughs> nude pics? Uh, who else are you going to solicit nude pictures well, from? Well, he, he probably subscribed to something like, you know, discountrussianbrides.com, and they just like constantly <laughs> are like <laughs> filling his inbox with, with, with possible things he might want to purchase. Um, I don't know. I just I can only speculate and but uh yeah, who knows. Yeah. Are there any are there any other cute world leaders that you know he could solicit new pictures from like from a diplomatic position. Like cuz we 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 you know America's not that well received over the world but Perhaps maybe if we got some nude pictures out of this whole thing, I think maybe the world would be a lot more like okay, well you know, you, we got to see her we got to see her topless, you know, and that, and that was as things, long as it's not that it's not as long as it's not. What's that woman from Germany, Merkel? What's yeah, that's name? what I was talking about. Merkel. I don't. I don't know her name. <laughs> yeah. No. Me no. foreign I, policy. I, I, that, oh, that's that would be funny. He'd be like, "Yep, you know what? Yeah, to secure relations with Germany, he'd be willing to take one for the team." Yeah, but I, th I think there actually is a couple of like. Oh, uh, well, maybe you can get the royals. Maybe you get some of the the the, the royals. I'm sure. You remember that? that? Remember that video? Wait, do you remember? Speaking of Merkel, do you remember uh, George Bush who like tried to give her a back massage in that one video? Did you ever see that? <laughs> I'm not making this up. George W. Bush. They're in like some like super high level like head of state conference, and it's a special like I don't know whatever they call the the little powwows. And he like kind of like he's like, hey, he's, you know, I guess he's used to just walking up behind people and like squeezing their shoulders. OK. And she looks at him like <laughs> she jumps out of the way. And is like, get away. <laughs> She's horrified at this physical contact. <laughs> like, hmm. OK, that's definitely a bad uh, diplomatic move there. <laughs> Keep your hands to yourself should be like the first thing they teach them before they let them into these parties. Well, you know, Joe Biden would, would probably. Right. Does, yeah, he, I don't even think Joe Biden would do this to like wow. the head of state of like a European country. Well, yeah, well, he does it to the senators in his own country. Well, and right, he's and he's well, he does. I thought he was like more into like younger younger people, or, or actually he's, everybody he's like in kind of an Congress equal opportunity. is younger than him. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, true. And there's so many of those videos. He is like an equal opportunity uh, grabber. Yeah. But hey, you know, like if you're going to start grabbing people, you might as well, you know, be a little bit equal about it. You know, practices what he preaches. Yeah. You know? Well, I noticed um, <laughs> I noticed they didn't bring him out as a candidate this go around. <laughs> oh, that's because his son died. Is that uh, why? Really? Yeah. Yeah. I guess they like... had to kill his son to keep him from running. <laughs> that's awful. <laughs> 
awful. Yeah, I think he died of cancer or something like that. And I was hoping he was going to run, it, not for not for any of like not because I want him to run or that he was better than Clinton or anything like that. The only reason why I wanted him to win is just because everybody was like, "Oh yeah, Bush and Hillary, they're going to definitely be the nominees. No questions about it. Don't even talk about it. What's the even point of mentioning it now?" And the whole time I was like, "That's so not true." What are you talking about? Like, no, that, that's not going to happen. Like, because I know who Bush was. Like, I, kn- I knew who Jeb Bush was. And I remember him in Florida. I remember him being, like, this kind of awkward, socially awkward loser. And on, uh, I was but, like, that's well, not going to yeah, happen. But you're like, yeah, they would name. never nominate. They'd never nominate a socially awkward loser for the GOP nomination. Yeah, if, if Frank, Frank Twice. The- like, Mitt Romney. Like, <laughs> Yeah, but hey, come on. As bad as Mitt Romney was, please clap. I mean, come on, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> please clap. The, the turtles, like, right? Even his mom was like making jokes about how how she doesn't like it. I mean, <laughs> she that's... was like, "Oh, my favorite." No, no, you're not my favorite son. <laughs> not even, not, not even close. Not even close. You know. No, no, sorry. <laughs> You know, W at least yeah. got the nomination. I did like that that book that was going around, the fake book that was going around that um, you know by by his by his mother. The hell was her name? Barbara Bush. There we go. Barbara Bush. That uh-huh. was like you know you've forsaken my son, therefore you've forsaken me, and I will curse upon this land for seven times. It's <laughs> got her with like black eyes and like messed up lipstick. Yeah. <laughs> Which yeah yeah. Yeah, she could be the power behind the throne for all we know. She's like the 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 real matriarch of their like dark cabal. Yeah, I think I think if if he would have ran, he would have gotten the nomination handedly. But uh, you know, who cares? If they're all you know, they're pretty much the same candidate at the end of the day. It's just that more people hate Clinton than Biden, you know, because you know, like we all had to deal with Clinton, uh, Hillary in some way shape or form. But uh, Biden all he ever did was, you know, inappropriately touch some senators and oh, we can deal with that you know and then, <laughs> and like, they, compared you know, to what they've had to deal with they're like yeah he didn't throw any bodies in the in the, in the potomac <laughs> did he okay all right did he push anybody in front of the subway uh on video okay <laughs> i'm starting to think that's actually a true story <laughs> The cards is actually a true story. Just the I, names I, have been edited I, to protect yeah. the innocent and the guilty. Seriously, I I lose track of what's real and what is from that show. Like I can't. <laughs> to me, it's just kind of a seamless reality between House of Cards and what really happens in in the Clinton family. Yeah. So, uh, what else has been going on? Um, anything fun? How's, how is, are you still doing the fiend the homeless thing? Are you still doing that or? Well, I was I was dewormed from the fiends, as mm-hmm. you know. So, so I my Bipcot license was revoked. So I'm Aww. not doing any more fiends. You still have it and, on your driver's uh, license, though, right? The <laughs> yes, and I still have a Bipstrong uh, bracelet with it, uh, right. in hologram form, which can well, I, I guess still still applies. Anyway, well, you're not um, a government agent, fiend. so you could still use it. I mean, you just can't yeah. use it on the fiend the homeless. Um, it was a great concept, but I have to say our implementation was less than desirable. Um, so, but it was, you know, it was it was fun, and we did uh, meet some interesting homeless folks. But none of the good stuff actually made it into the video. So, kind of have to. That project really needs to be uh, need a do over, I think, to do it right. Here, here's the thing. I I have I had come up with this idea because you know I, I work at a at a nursing home, and then you know all these little old ladies who are confused for some reason. All their TVs always end up on CNN. That and plus sometimes I'm I'm wanting to watch it just to see what other what other stupid thing fall out of Trump's mouth. But um, uh, so I'm like kind of interested at the same time. But they were talking about how the TSA is understaffed, uh, and they're oh, looking yeah. for more people, and and, and I, that didn't interest me because I wanted to work there, which you know the government pension would be nice. But uh, the reason why I was really interested is because they were talking about how. Uh, the the uh, the union says, oh no no no, they need like you know ten times the amount of of people at the TSA, and you know the government only wants to hire one tenth of that amount, and that's that's unreasonable. And I'm, and I'm like, okay, and but they're like saying, well, either way, we're still gonna have to deal with long lines this summer at the security agency, and I was like, and and because of that, a lot of uh, airports have been hiring entertainers uh, to get you know to entertain people while they're waiting in line. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> because that's the solution, right? Um, but I thought a, a better Ooh. idea. Like, why not instead of feeding the homeless, why not feed, feed the travelers? Because you're going to have people who are going to be standing in line for at least an hour. No, feed the TSA. Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> go right right to them. They're the ones that need to have a change of heart immediately, right? Right. But I mean, you could also so, you can also feed the travelers because they're bored. Why not listen to you know like some episodes of the Lawbirds or hey, Free Talk well, Live you know you know Ernie Hancock, and, right? Right. Yeah. Ernie Ernie Hancock came up with. Um, back in, I guess it was 2010 when all the TSA, you know, hubbub was going on. Mm -hmm. He came up with a little gift bag for TSA agents that included a dosimeter, like a radiation, like one of those things that measures your radiation exposure. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I thought this was great. Giving it to the TSA people themselves. Oh, you're standing there next to this like microwave oven all day. Um, and it was against their rules for them to even like have one. Like they were not allowed to have their own like radiation detectors. Really? Yeah. So Ernie, so you know, Ernie's brilliant and he he picked up on that immediately. So um, you know, imagine the you know, the great PR moments, you know, of you know, trying to protest these these radiation scanners by, hey, you know, just you're probably <laughs> you're probably the most susceptible standing next to that thing. So here you go. Um, I don't know. Did any of them quit? They do it's, have hiring problems. Yeah, it's possible. I actually had a, a friend who who was uh, a member of the TSA for a while, and then he ended up quitting. And I remember we used to get into some debates about it. Like, and I used to be like, he was like, "Well, well, how many terrorist attacks have happened since then?" It's like that's. Did he get his job on uh, on from a pizza box ad? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> that's true. That's where they advertise. That's their that's their prime. Like, yeah. Yeah, you, you fresh out of college and you don't have no skills because you you majored in arts. Uh, c- come rub people down, <laughs> come rub people's groins <laughs> for a living. You know you want to. It's the only time you ever get a chance to touch any of these things. Uh, so yeah. <laughs> so why not make it a living? Um, yeah, I mean, actually, see, you know, see, I actually googled if- an image for this for this pizza box that actually has the ad on it. This was for Washington Reagan National Airport in Washington Dulles. Uh, yeah, part time, full time, federal benefits, paid, ongoing training. Yeah, hmm. <laughs> finally get to second base with women. Yeah. <laughs> Give them a good old pat down. Like, oh yeah, sorry, you can't go through the scanner on this one. You're gonna have to get. You're gonna have to get the full pat down. Yeah, random, random check. Uh, I forgot what I was going it's- with. Oh yeah, but we should kind of have like like a like a full like a, like an assault on this. So we should like go through the, the security agency or sec- the security lines and give them the the radiation counters and on top of that hand them off uh radios with you know some free talk live and some 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 lullbirds and some some fiends and you know and just like hey you're going to be sitting in this line for 3 hours why not listen to some quality audio, right? And then you know, it would freak people out, but they'd be like, once they see someone in front of them take it, they will take it. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. Be like, wait, wait, wait. They're, if you can get one person to take it, then the other people behind them are like, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. What? Is All this? you do is say free MP3 players, and then the first person's like, huh? And they're like, yeah. And then he, once one person takes it, and like the others see it's not like exploding, then they all come and get one. Yeah. We did that at the uh, like the bus station. We were like, we we couldn't find enough homeless people, so we're like, we had the whole bag of these things. Uh, um, of these uh, cute little MP3 players, and they'd be highly functional, especially if you hadn't epoxied in the MP3 card. Um, <laughs> so, but that's what makes it funny. brilliant, right? <laughs> well, it, it makes it something, and uh, it makes it interesting. And but people are like, "Hey, cool," you know, like so. You know, everyone's hanging out at the bus stop. Or like, if three MP3 players are like, "Yeah," and like, and we got buttons too. They're like, "Buttons, yeah." Like, here's one, guns and weed. Here we got uh, freedom. We got uh, you know, yeah. What does this mean? Buy sheep, four sheep, no sheep. Like, uh, next. <laughs> <laughs> Here, have this button instead. <laughs> have a bip strong. <laughs> so, anyway, it really is fun, though. I think it is fun to do these kind of things. And with the right uh, video and editing, you could really, like, you know, to go out, do that for two hours, edit it down to the top, like, three minutes of interactions. It would be hilarious. Yeah. And de- and definitely get your get your camera out of landscape. Or- landscape no you want it in landscape you want it out of portrait mode no portrait mode this was like the one thing i didn't like about it it's like oh why do i have to watch this video in portrait mode but eh, it was still good um i'm surprised the mormons didn't take one that would have been an interesting thing to get some mormons some Mor- yeah it was, there was a, an instance where there was a couple of mormons uh you know mormon missionaries standing out in the corner <laughs> they were offered a uh an mb3 player they were like that. no i was like okay. oh come on man of all the people uh. they should have taken I mean, 
So I don't know. There should should be some sort of thing like that, but definitely I think that the going, but we should also epoxy them to the travelers, the foreheads, <laughs> epoxy the MB3 players to their heads, uh, and then there would have been like a whole thing like oh, some libertarians in Las Vegas and and Philly were epoxying uh, bombs to people's faces <laughs> <laughs> at the airport. That would have got some news coverage and yeah, more Lawbirds coverage. I'm, I'm all for that. Well, you know. Um- you know, there's a related story that that I saw that that uh, that Lou had posted um, that Homeland Security is now helping to take down unlicensed massage therapists. OK, so um, I suspect this could be solving the labor shortage at the TSA. OK, so like first th- first they're like, look, we just can't find people that are willing to come put their hands all over strangers for minimal pay and benefits. They're like, well, what are Hey, how about those amateur massage therapists? Isn't that what they're doing? And then, like, uh, okay, make that illegal. So I, they I, made their job illegal, and now if you want to keep, you know, now you have to come get the blue shirt uniform. I would travel a lot more often if I knew that there was people who without massage licenses uh, at the TSA now because usually those types of masseuses um, – that those massages the ones end you well. Are those, you saying that? Are, are you saying those are the preferred, <laughs> un, the market regulated s- no, masseuses? No, yeah, the, no, the, the unlicensed ones are the ones you want because those ones end right. well. They end well. They're the right. Wink, They're the market. Wink. That's that's called market regulated as opposed to government regulated. Right. Oh, yeah. Because you know, because regular masseuses, you, you just get you just get a rub down and then like you walk out and you're like, oh. She was pretty cute too. Nothing happened. I thought we could work something now, but the unregulated ones, you know, those end well. That's when you're walking out, you know, a couple ounces lighter. <laughs> Just seems like the, all of these things should be like clearly understood in advance and like discussed openly between consenting adults. Yeah, you know, you're getting right? a pat down at the TSA. She's like, "You want happy ending?" <laughs> Twenty Not from the ones I've $20. seen. That's for sure. No. Yeah. Uh, no. no, you know those. That's why I want to live in this world. You know where. I- <laughs> You, get, you uh, know, if you want to just piss off the TSA, just start taking their picture of them working. They freak out. Oh, oh, oh you can't do that. You can't do that. Yes, I can. Uh, 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 but, but, but my feels. <laughs> and then they run away. <laughs> <laughs> well, then the lines get longer because now it takes even more time because one of them went home <laughs> crying. <laughs> he had to go to his safe space. <laughs> Next week in the Las Vegas Sentinel, uh, but by uh, no by by TSA safe space a, I mean by TSA, TSA safe space I mean the place where they uh, stash the iPads before they can get them home. Yeah, <laughs> and then they, they're gonna whine to the, the local press like, oh, he made a he made a meme about me. <laughs> this, is a, <laughs> this is not fair. Aww. Aww. <laughs> Well, I think some of them, ha- they probably have gotten, like, disability for, like, psychological um, uh, disability after being, like, traumatized after, like, I don't know, fondling little old ladies all day. They're, like, can't live with themselves and they're on disability now. Is it possible? <laughs> uh, I know some of them get pretty offended. Like, uh, there was a uh, an article that I read, like, this was way back when I used to listen to Free Talk Live. You know, <laughs> way back then. Uh <laughs> I'm not dissing them. <laughs> just I just kind of grew out of it. Um, it was a good show, but uh, yeah, not my thing. Anyways, um, there was like I remember them reading an article talking about how there was a, a gay guy with a bunch of piercings down there, uh, and when they were doing the pat downs or whatever, uh, I guess all those piercings kind of enhance, uh, uh, enhance the sensations. Uh, okay. I, some here, and he ejaculated in his pants during the pat down, uh, and then he was arrested. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! I think that would be the best thing ever. So it's like, uh, you're actually looking to get you, one of those. Well, Prince you'd have Alberts. to train for that. You'd have yeah. to train for that. Like you'd really have to practice and know what you're doing to to try to get that kind of result. I think. Yeah. Do do a so. couple warm up warm-ups before you get there just get right to that at verge and then go okay i'm ready to go <laughs> in, in your car uh, get you your know bags. what <laughs> it's not it's not it's not the it's not the travel experience i'm looking for to be honest <laughs> with you no no i no i don't think so hey i found this headline the one that get this headline 
since we sort of alluded to people getting their feelings hurt, bring it back around to the beginning. This is a headline from <laughs> from the actual Trentonian. Okay. Okay. The article headline says, "But hurt Trenton police officer arrests NJ Weed Man for cyber bullying. What? ACLU bashes charges." They actually use the word "butt hurt" in the headline to describe a Trenton police officer. Yeah, I okay. Think, I think was this, this is same, progress. Yeah, this is I think the same article you were talking about earlier. I think you mentioned this earlier. No, that was a no. That was a different. So that they was had a totally two- different news source. This officer in the mainstream media is now being associated with with being butt hurt. But, like they're. <laughs> so there's two articles referring to butt hurt now. Or uh, I think the other one I mentioned was from like the was the website of the pop radio station NJ oh, okay. something. So, but yeah, multiple. This is multiple media hits for the word butt hurt. <laughs> on, <laughs> I mean, this isn't this a step towards police accountability? Yes. <laughs> right. They're no longer they're no longer getting an automatic like pass. Right. Like. Like if this had been like like say even five years ago, you know it would have been like um, what what would the headline have said? Uh, like a disingenuous you know? uh, YouTube, uh, you or not YouTube, uh, Facebooker uh, posts terrible you know racist misogynist things or hateful comments against cop. Now it's like oh look at this butt hurt cop <laughs> arresting this pothead. Yeah, yeah. You know, or or you know what, or no, it would just be like terroristic threats, you know, or like it, there, there's some way they could describe this to make it look like the person. I mean, actually, I'm I'm struggling to even word it that way because this story is so ridiculous. I can't even. <laughs> I can't even state butt explain hurt. it. Yeah, now now yeah. we can actually have confirmed butt hurts <laughs> in the local paper. Like, oh, look, someone was officially butt hurt this morning. <laughs> I have the news article to back it up. There was definitely butt hurt. And I'm serious. I'm I'm wa- I'm waiting for for when the police chief comes out and starts, you know, saying like, "Oh yeah, so and so is hospitalized uh, with third degree butt hurt." Um. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, no, they'll they'll, they'll what they'll do is they'll classify that as an actual assault on an officer. Yeah. Okay. Like if you yeah if that officer suffers from butt hurt, he can actually <laughs> like that's that's the same as assaulting an officer, and he can take like like medical leave afterwards, <laughs> right? He gets he gets a medical recovery period, where he can retreat to his safe space. Yeah, and, and a doctor will of course prescribe let him the, some. Let uh, the swelling go down. Yeah, yeah. Pre- prescribe him some uh, some some medical blankies and and uh, cookies and milk and and of course maybe some marijuana maybe some marijuana <laughs> some medical marijuana get some medical <laughs> marijuana for being butt hurt about arresting someone with medical marijuana. <laughs> well, if you you know. Remember, his name is Herb Flowers, okay? <laughs> and and I thought to myself, you know, what's it like to grow up with the name Herb Flowers, okay? Probably hippies were making fun of him his whole life, right? Those pot smokers were like, Herb Flowers, dude! Like, and he got so sick of it, finally he snapped and he's declared war on, on Ed Fortune. It's, how's that for a, like a, 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 like a supervillain origin story? That that would that I would be a lot better than the Batman versus Superman movie, I guess. From what I'm told, <laughs> I hear I hear it's already like a cult classic for being so bad. Yeah, that- it's it's like I don't know, man. Like, what was worth? Just like, oh, we're gonna stop fighting because our mothers had the same first name. That's un- that's unbelievable. But this Herb Flowers, man this this was a this was a mean backstory. <laughs> 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 and are you, uh, well, are you a fan of the classic uh, Star Trek, Captain Kirk? N- n- no, I, I, I no, okay. Yeah, I have, I've kind of talked about this. Like Star Star Trek, uh, it's it's not bad. Like every time that it's on and, and I'm I'm watching it, it, usually the Next Generation or the original stuff. And when it's on, I'm just like, okay, I'll sit through this. And I was like, okay, it's not bad. It's just like, I don't I can't muster up the the will power to turn on a negative I got episode. It. Well. But you may still be familiar with the episode where the space hippies came on board. The no, Enterprise. this was a thing. It was space. This, there was a group of of space hippie musicians, okay, <laughs> that that came on board the Enterprise, well, and the they're like all countercultural. And yeah, this is like total sixties, and they're like they're on their way to Eden, you know, and uh, 
So they're all groovy and and Spock jams with them at one point. And uh, anyway, is that how we it, got the uh, the uh, that, that song about uh, the Hobbit? Uh, <laughs> what was that? That oh god damn it! What is that a uh, Spock song where he was singing about the, one of those Hobbits? Bilbo Baggins. I don't know. Bilbo, you you have you haven't seen the Spock song where you were singing about Bilbo Baggins? No, he doesn't sing in this. He just plays the his Vulcan harp thing. But anyway, but at one point Vulcan they harp. these hippies they call Captain Kirk a, a derogatory name and they start chanting Herbert, 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 <laughs> and, and, and 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 you can see like Kirk's getting his feelings hurt because he's not even really sure what it means and they're like, but it's obviously derogatory. And then and and then later uh, he's like Spock, what did they? Uh, what do they mean when they call me a Herbert? <laughs> and he's like, well, it's a, a rather unflattering term for someone who's uh, uh, rigidly follows orders and <laughs> Herbert, Herbert, Herbert. So, so it was basically he was calling him a square. You're so square, man. Complete, yeah. Okay. And, and I thought, you know, this could have been also part of Herbert's, like, like trauma at the hands of hippies. <laughs> like <laughs> Herbert. Herbert, Herbert, her Herbert. flowers, her flowers, <laughs> herb, <laughs> and, and like seriously, if ever I'm going to talk about him in public, I'm calling him Herb Flower. I'm assuming the H is silent when he when he shortens his name. I don't know for sure, but Herb Flowers, Herb Flowers. Yeah. All right. So, uh, was there anything else <laughs> interesting? Um, uh, I can't find anything in my news feed. Because I don't, I don't come prepared. I just check my news feed to some of the see some of the stuff that I posted this week, and then ah, eh, nothing. I mean, yeah, Kokesh, nothing. yeah, Kokesh, Peterson, Herb. Are you, so are you coming to Pork Fest? You're coming to Pork Fest this year. Uh, I can't come to Pork Fest. I'm gonna go to the Jackalope Fest. You should come. Oh, to interesting. Jackalope. Have you been to that before? No, this is this is my first. I had not even heard about it until this year. Um, oh, it's basically, uh, it sounds very interesting to me. I Very guess, un pork fest. Well, yeah. They, they, okay, so they have they had the, the idea was to create a pork west, and they actually were calling it pork west for a while, and then you know, Free State Project, you know, incorporated. Uh, you know, you know how how butt hurt they can be. Did they? Oh, did they? Did they get a hold? Oh, they wouldn't let it be uh, pork west. I don't by think the they were trying to project. I don't think that, they were. That'd be a great one. Yeah, I don't think they were coming down like, oh, we're going to sue you or anything. It was just kind of like, come on, man, that's. Do your own thing. Uh, so they're like, oh, all right, fine. We'll call it something else. And so they started calling it the Fair Jackalope. Enough. Yeah. So they call it the Jackalope thing. It's basically Pork pork West, but there's no electricity, no facilities. Everything no is outdoors. No permission slips. Yeah, no permission right? slips. Yeah, Nobody's in charge. It's on unowned land. I guess there, there's some sort of um, like legal limbo that this land is in where it's not quite the states and it's not quite private. It's just kind of like in limbo, so no one really owns it. Um, well, well, by by that you mean uh, federally occupied? Yeah, it's not federally occupied, right. and it's not right. There's, no, occupied. it is federally occupied, so, yeah. but there's no legitimate owner. Not really. I guess it's available. I, I guess on, it's available for homesteading. Yeah, on paper it says that some private owner owns it, but they don't. Uh, so I don't know what exact or or vice versa or something. Is this along at a, those maybe lines. it's at a new location this time because that doesn't sound like. Yeah, I just thought it was like. I thought, first of all, isn't all of the West owned by the by Uncle Sam? <laughs> well, of course, yeah. But okay, but, so but, but it's, so it's, if this is more than like an acre, it's got to be federal land, probably. Yeah. Well, I mean, every, I guess everything is their land because they they lay property taxes. It's the right? kings. It's the king's land. Right. It's so the kings. Yeah. So they lay property taxes. They own it, but they on paper, quote unquote, on paper, uh, <laughs> it's not owned by by anyone. I guess there's some some anomaly. So. So there's no there's no facilities there's no nothing it's just basically a bunch of woody areas where you can camp and uh, you know and, it already and, sounds more sanitary than Rogers Campground <laughs> but I, I guess people set up I guess they set up uh, um, kind of like stages so people can perform music or have a debate or uh, whatever so that that should be interesting and if i can find a way to record a lawbirds episode there we're definitely going to do it because we, ha we have another lawbird oh, do it. That, that lives here in vegas and so we're definitely going um cool so i'm definitely going to go to that i can't make it to pork fest when is that what's the date of that again uh i have to check i think it's in early august the first week yeah it's the first week of august 
if I recall correctly. August the 1st through 8th. Yeah, I just got here. So. Let's see, the Jackalope Freedom Fest or something along those lines. My internet's being really slow. Yeah, August 1 through from. 8. Who knows? You know, we're going to be kicking around out west. I don't know if we'll be around that area at that time, but maybe we'll drop in as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, so we could, we could do a, a three-way. Well, that sounds wrong. Freaky. Or does it? <laughs> so, yeah, uh, yeah, the first week of... Come on, load. Come on, I'm doing a podcast here. Internet. Jeez. Oh, this is the actual art fair. This is not what I wanted. This is not right. No, I've already got it. It's August 1st through 8th. Oh yeah, so I'm probably gonna no make immediate it. bathrooms or showers in the area. Yeah, you could, but you could sponsor a porta pot. Oh, nice. that'd be so cool. Yeah, um, and we're not gonna have he who can't be named uh, attack the uh, uh, allegedly. I don't think he did allegedly attacking the uh, water supply because there is no water supply. So right. You got to bring your own water. You know, maybe I'll. You know, maybe I'll sponsor a porter pot for the Austin Peterson campaign. Yeah, like maybe. <laughs> I mean, we could put some of those memes inside of the porta pot. <laughs> it'll be like, make your Austin Peterson donation here. You know, like <laughs> Austin Peterson donations accepted. <laughs> or what you should do is, is like lay, lay the porta potty out. Have have something. Have have his little logo thing or whatever. But right where the toilet is, long gone is, by then, is, is where this his is August. Yeah, this is this, you could, well. Yeah, he'll be long gone. He's not going to get the nomination. He's he's too slick. No one no one likes him. There's a couple people that hey, like Bob, him. Yeah. But you know what? You know, right. If you had said, hey, you know, hey, could Bob Barr be the nominee? The worst drug warrior ever? That guy that, like, hates gay people and is, like, a total ass? And who, and was, his, like, and who, who was the person running against him was, was Mary Ruart. You know, she was a shoe-in from the, from, the, from the first moment. And then... Like, this nice libertarian lady, like, who's articulate, has written books, has a PhD, like, smart, knows the stuff, oh, knows, but she knows like, what libertarianism but she's, but is. But she's pro-child porn. She wants people to do child porn, right? That was the whole smear against her, which there was a little bit of merit to, but not really. Uh, it was kind of, like, overblown. The, the overall context, it made sense, but, yeah, it was kind of, really... You know what? I guess it means if you want to have if you want to have any kind of public life, you better just avoid that topic. Yeah, right. Yeah, Seriously, you can't, you're, you're not going to win that one. You you're not going to win that one. You, well, you can you can win that one if you if you tow, you know, oh, oh child porn, ban it. No government. It doesn't matter. We just ban it. Why? Why would you say that? Be, because I'm I'm yep. trying to achieve a political career here. Okay, <laughs> you can't <laughs> you can't have any the, nuance of this the position. government. Without the government, who could ban child porn? Polycentric legal orders. Just shut up. Well, Quit if back. you recall, <laughs> remember Jan. You remember Jan Helfeld, right? The Socratic method dude. Yeah, the the Socratic troll. I love that guy. I love how he trolls. Right. People. Okay. Yeah. He's great when he's trolling politicians, but then like every time he like teams up, he goes against an anarchist. He's he's like sort of the tables is turned, and he's the one explaining why you have to have the government. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and it, it's always funny to see people like minarchists that are they spend most of their lives arguing for less government, but now suddenly they're like have to, to you know explain why they love government. And uh, he he I've seen several debates, and every time he mentions the age of consent, as like, well, what if I go to a place? How do how do I know what the age of consent is? You're a 50 year old why man. Why are you government. trying to? Yeah, why are you trying to bang 16 year old girls, man? Come on. Right, because so because <laughs> like without the government, he can't imagine crossing to going to a new place and not knowing what children he can boink. You know, like <laughs> I mean, that's his like. I need the state because otherwise, how am I supposed to know if she's too young? You know. Well, the answer is wow. pretty simple. Like, there's this thing. I don't know if you've heard of it. Like. Perhaps maybe you have. It's called the, uh, uh, what was it, In inter internet, internet. So there's this thing called the internet, and you can, like, um, you can search for things on it. So you can be like, hi, I'm I'm in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. What's the age of consent in Tuscaloosa, Alabama? Well, apparently there's two polycentric agencies, and there's some there's some debate about this, but they seem to agree somewhere around the age of 16. So I, I can I, definitely you know what? How about this, this. I can definitely hang Same. out in front of the high school and, and okay. pick up some 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 right. uh, some hotties. Right. Well, he would feel comfortable right. with that. That's why he needs the state. Okay. But without the state, he, I'd have to be like, hey, dude, why don't you go ask her dad what he thinks about it? You know? <laughs> <laughs> right? And if she's not old enough, he'll tell you. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> 
<laughs> since you don't have the ability to judge for yourself, uh, and you need you need someone else to let you know what's acceptable. Um, so, anyway, so, so here's the thing: I, I don't I don't know if there's any big libertarian anarchists that listen to us that would ever run into Jen Hetfield. But Jen Hetfield always does this thing where he's like, so you support this, you know, and then and then it goes into the non-aggression principle. He was like, you know, should someone, this group delegate the rights, delegate the right. Yeah. Have. To say yeah. that this person should take from this group amount of money like no that's theft he's like okay so what makes the government okay for them to do this which you should just turn it around on them it's like okay well you want this agency to to do this but can i come to your house and steal from you so how come you advocate for this group i mean i really want to see his reaction to that because you know basically kind of getting it's probably been done i mean he's done he's done like three of these like anarchist debate quote-unquote debates which were very sort of poorly constructed events uh, at least one of them the one i watched was like you know i sometimes people host these online debates and they don't even they, they started off wrong by not having a clear declaration yeah to be for or against so it ends up people just like yelling about something else the whole time like uh, yeah i haven't seen a good one um kinsella for all the great stuff he does he's not really that like he he was really hostile in that debate, which you know, I saw a debate with him when he was. Did doing, he do one with Helfeld? Yeah, he did one with he- Helfeld. Yeah. Okay. But but uh, so I mean, I, I like I like Kinsella, uh, but that debate was just terrible. He, he in, in mostly because Kinsella did kind of was really kind of angry the whole time and yelling. Um, I, you know these kind of things. I I just uh, you know they if I recall that went on for like two hours and I probably dropped out after yeah. like fifteen minutes tops. The other so. one was. Um, Victor Pross and Victor Pross is a was is a moron and a con artist. Uh, and then the other really? one was uh, I think didn't he debate? Yeah, he debated. The first one he did was with Molyneux, and that like I guess well Molyneux won because Molyneux is a, uh, he knows how to dance dance around people during he's the trained. debates. Yeah, uh, he you know he's he's been yeah he's trained in debates. But I guess there was like a falling out and they hate each other now over it. Like they, they they really took it they took it to the butt they you know they had some so oh, really because I know they hurt. like were from the they're both from Canada I thought they were friends and <laughs> and really so that ended up in what yeah you would think happened? that like every other word would have ended with sorry <laughs> <laughs> but that's why you're wrong I'm sorry see, <laughs> I'm gonna see if they let me into Pork Fest I mean into uh, after Pork Fest into Canada this year I'm gonna try to. Try to go west and get some poutine. See if, see if they'll let me over there. Yeah, yeah. P- poutine's amazing, man. I'm telling you, poutine's amazing. Is it? Yeah, poutine That's is amazing. That's gravy. What is it? Gravy on French fries. Yeah, what is that? I, I haven't I haven't had it in Canada, but I but there's places here that have it. But it's it's like this. It's kind of this. It's like a meat gravy, and then it also has cheese curds. Uh, by the way, if you had there's there's a place that we do the Hans Hermann Hoppe. Uh, it was the Hans Hermann Hoppe. Hop, like as in hoppy beer, Hanserman Hoppy mm. Sobrital Removal Service. We're gonna have our first one this oh. week on Friday. Uh, Ooh, how's that going? Okay, yeah, I'm very interested in that. We well, we did the open beta. The open beta was basically just kind of us discussing. Okay, so when are we gonna do it? Okay, every third. I think it was every third Friday. Um, and that we're also gonna be after we do this and it starts taking off, then we're gonna start doing things like we're gonna have a cigar bar. We're gonna do like one where we have a cigar bar on a weekday, and then you know do this one on a Friday, and then we're gonna have one on uh, Freedom Fest when that happens. So it's, we had a whole bunch dabs of dabs bar, but this is gonna yeah, be the this is gonna party. be the first official one. So hopefully there's gonna be more people, and there's some people that are interested. But anyways, they have like these fried cheese curds, and they do they take those curds and they deep fry them, and it's amazing. Uh, but yeah, okay, yeah, poutine is amazing. Um, but they use kind of like those things, but they don't deep fry them. But it's you know you're slathering them with with hot gravy over some French fries, and <sighs> I'll take your word for it. Yeah, it, no, you, anyway. you got to try it. <laughs> you, you only you only live once, right? YOLO, YOLO. Um, hmm. Ironically, <laughs> <laughs> hey, whatever happened with Bodie McBoatface? Did you ever find out where where that story? went? Oh yeah, they they decided they're not going to name it Bodie McBoatface. But did it win the poll? Yeah, it won the poll. Or they're not going to name it that because you know democracy. That's how democracy works. Everybody votes. Everybody gets their say. And and if you choose the wrong choice, you lose. Then they choose it for you. Yeah, they choose it. Right. You, know, you don't. You don't. Well, it's, this is not. Right, it's kind of. It's kind of like okay. the way. Right. It's kind of like the way we do like dinner with like young children. You know, when they're like before they can really choose. Like, look, you're choosing. <laughs> yeah. 
Here, here's, as you long can as have you choose you what want. I want you to choose, you're choosing. As soon I'm, as you stop choosing what I want you to choose, you don't get a choice anymore. I want spaghetti and Skittle balls. <sighs> Asparagus it is. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's kind of like, it's, that's how, you know, that's how it works, you know? You, you, <laughs> what, what's, what, there was a, there was kind of a good joke, like, you know, you, you, you you can choose from whatever you want so long as it's you know, so so long as it's this one right oh yeah the the the, uh, the Ford this what it was you, know, you, can, you can have your right, model you can, any color you want as long as it's black, black. yeah <laughs> so, yeah all right man that was that's an awesome show it's been a great show yeah hopefully we can have you on some more anytime yeah. anytime love the <laughs> love love Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT NoGov license. The BIPCOT NoGov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in a bunch of the Western world, it's okay to just judge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about FiendPhone. FiendPhone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try FiendPhone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve FiendPhone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com, F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com, Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. FiendPhone, I never knew remote audio could be this good.